pain arises, it breaks the peace. Should I turn my attention to the pain as it has, as it is a more powerful than the breath at this point, or should I change posture and refocus on the breath? So I would recommend working with it, uh, learning to work with it before changing the posture to some degree. So yes, I, I know what you mean. At a certain point it becomes so painful that one has to give it attention. And so at that point, give it the attention. The training then is then not to add aversion to it. And this is really helpful actually. If, if we can train in this, this has enormous benefits in life. You just think it's ordinary, boring, frustrating, annoying knee pain, but it's actually a really good training situation because how often in life do we react to a painful situation by becoming irritated and angry and reacting and making karma? So your knee pain is giving you a great opportunity to develop patience and differentiate pain from aversion to pain and reaction to pain. So there's a lot of work to do there. First of all, you know, it starts to impinge in that way. Just watch it and ask those kind of questions. Is it solid or is it changing? What's it like? Try to get interested in it. So becoming averse to it is a disaster. Basically, you have to get interested in it. And have a really close look. What's really going on there? And you'll notice these kind of kind of trills and ripples of sensation is quite amazing actually. It's not the one throbbing thing that you think it is. It's actually millions of little feelings constantly changing. So that's actually really interesting if you really had a close look at that. And then looking at it, you're trying to see, just trying to see what it is. Then nobody that's I can't stand it anymore. So when you can't stand it anymore you take five more breaths. Okay. You can change postures in five breaths. And don't go, <laughs> no, five <laughs> natural breaths. One in breath, one out breath. Count up to five. And what you're doing there, this is what I was saying, is enormously helpful, is that being patient with an irritating phenomena. If you do this every day, you know, sometimes people, I'm an abbot, and somebody comes, and occasionally people are just rude or they speak out of turn or they're just uh, out of line or something they say is stupid and as an abbot you know you have to maintain a certain type of behavior and I do have people come and say occasionally I can't believe how patient you were with that, with that guy and it's like this is where you do the work it's like working with your knee pain working with you know, itches, scratches, mosquitoes, those irritating things. It's like training the mind to be with something irritating and putting some space there before adding aversion. And then also, when there is aversion, then we have another opportunity to not express the aversion. So it's really a lot to be developed and uh, it's very useful in life. So sometimes, for people who practice well, and not enlightened people, but just people who've done a lot of practice, you can be very upset about something and want to express your discontent and those around you might not even know. And you might be working with it on two levels. One, the pain and the irritation itself. And two, the desire to take revenge or act it out. And because you've kind of got awareness around that and awareness around that and you're determined not to do it, that experience can just cease and the people that you're living with might not even know that something they did really annoyed you. <laughs> so, but this comes from working with, with pain. So, I'm talking about irritating and annoying experiences. You know, death. Not always. Some people have serene deaths and uh, peaceful deaths, but most people's death involves a lot of pain and a lot of grief. So it's good preparation. Then, the more you practice with it, then you, you can develop 
uh, insight, obviously, into impermanence and not self. Like you really see it changing because because it hurts so much, and because you if you react, you kind of throw yourself out of your posture. You have to be you have to be really still, and in that being really still, you can see and you develop a really profound insight. Then some people have attained to sort of unnatural practicing with pain. So whereas Ajahn Anand's path was body contemplation, others have done it through feelings in the body. So that would be like sitting in full lotus and making that vow, I'm not moving all night, and sitting through pain, and, and they, they have their amazing insight into the impermanent nature of the pain. Uh, that's, that one's not for the faint-hearted. But it is, it's good to know that it's possible that working with pain can liberate you as well. So it's a practice that's full of potential. But on a more ordinary level, suppose you do those five breaths and just notice, does it hurt as much as it was when you, uh, when you couldn't stand it anymore? Because that's what, that's what comes up. I can't stand it, I have to move, I have to move. It's like, okay, five more breaths. And you, you get through it and you will notice in most cases that it's changed. It's not the same as it was five breaths ago. And you can take it. Okay, so keep watching. And you get to the same point. Okay, five more breaths. <laughs> and you might find that you can sit through the whole hour, even though you felt after ten minutes that you absolutely had to leave. So, but suppose, you know, it gets worse. And you count to five and it's worse. And you really want to move. So then, yeah, mindfully, slowly move. This is really important that you don't throw yourself out of the meditation like, <sighs> And start again. Oh, it, you No, know, that's, that's not practice. So, holding the feeling in awareness, and then do the five breaths, and then set the intention, now I'm going to slowly change my posture. And, you know, if you can, you go from the sitting to the, to that kind of fairly gracious and hopefully elegant shift <laughs> or if, if you have to go from the floor to a, a chair you can but you see you see the forest monks do this all the time and often have to sit on granite it's very hard and uh, but we wear these kind of skirt like things and you have, you have to be careful with how you change posture And so you see, you know, when they get to the point where it's really, really painful and they have to change posture, but they do it very graciously. And uh, sometimes just that much, just that sitting up, flicking the knee from one side to another side, and sitting down again, the pain's released, and you can go for another 20 minutes, half an hour. Does anyone not have knee pain? That's our big teacher, isn't it? <laughs>